Amen. I want to thank our worship team and those that have been a part of our media team. It's such a blessing to be able to serve with them uh, week in and week out. And it's a blessing to, uh, to be able to meet with just a few of our Calvary family. But today, we're doing our best to maintain uh, what the CDC and what our local uh, Longview government has uh, given us to do. Uh, we're allowed to meet together for online worship services in our facility, and we have done that. We're maintaining our 10 or so. We're socially uh, uh, spaced out so that we have distance between all of us, and uh, thank you for joining in uh, with us today. Hey, just a few weeks shy of 50 years ago, the spacecraft Apollo 13 after a devastating and almost mission-canceling explosion, uh, crippled, tried to make their way back into our atmosphere. An in-flight explosion caused the astronauts to have to use their uh, archaic navigational skills to get back into our atmosphere. Just the slightest of miscalculations would have caused them to veer off and causing certain death, uh, spiraling thousands of miles off course into outer space. And even if those archaic and uh, almost uh, in our day and time prehistoric navigational skills were to work, uh, they never knew if the heat shields would allow them to enter back into our atmosphere. Didn't know if the parachutes would function or not after the explosion. And to add to all of their fears, there was a tropical storm brewing in the landing zone uh, that they were supposed to be using. Now, I was just a, uh, a small child just up the, the road here uh, in first grade at Pine Tree Elementary School when all of this was happening. So I have very limited memory of it. But I've seen the footage of the, the television uh, films of that day and time. I can remember seeing those uh, those films and hearing Walter Cronkite's voice as he guided America through that time. I can remember uh, hearing, uh, you know, those from the NASA Space Center trying to make communication with the Odyssey. Odyssey, this is Houston. Do you read me? You may remember hearing those, uh, those words being said. The silence uh, it's been said was agonizing, uh, three minutes worth of silence while they were waiting for, uh, for word to get back that they had made it through that time frame. And finally, after that long silence, uh, the receiver that was picking up the television broadcast crackled and there was a faint glimpse of what looked like that spacecraft uh, as it appeared, and then a voice on the other side said, Hello, Houston, this is Odyssey. It's good to see you again. I can remember seeing that, and, and I can remember uh, the sounds that, that would be emitted from America as they, as they all rejoiced that it was over. You know, if, if you watch the, the movie about that, about that scene, you can remember at one point from there, there was a a reporter that asked one of the NASA, the NASA officials uh, wanting to know the details about that. And, and in there, there was an exchange to where one of those reporters kept repeating that, that, that this was bad and that it, would, it could end in disaster. And one of the NASA officials actually said to the reporter, said, I know what the problems are, Henry. Uh, and I quote, and it said, it, it will be one of the worst disasters NASA has ever experienced. To which one of NASA's chief officials answered back with all due respect I believe this is going to be he said one of our finest hours and that was based off an actual conversation you know in the same way that that NASA chief official said this is going to be one of our finest hours I would say to you that I believe with all of my heart uh, brothers and sisters in Christ that this can be for the church. This can be one of our finest hours. Not taking anything away from the seriousness of the situation that we're in. 
But I'm seeing Christians come together in a way that I don't know if I've seen it in my lifetime. I'm seeing churches become strengthened in a way that I don't know if I've seen it in my lifetime. I get it. This is, uh, this is something we've never experienced before. In the same way that that, uh, that spacecraft, the Odyssey, the Apollo 13, the way it had to come back under uh, archaic navigational skills, you and I are in uncertain times, and, and, and we're having to navigate in a way that we've, we've never navigated before, and we're having to try to navigate through times that we're not familiar with. We've never had to go through the COVID-19 coronavirus time before. Uh, None of us have ever had to do social distancing before. I've never experienced uh, shelter at home orders before. Most of us have never experienced uh, shelves at the grocery store without items on them. This has been all new to us. It's been scary. It is certainly uncertain times uh, we are going through uncharted waters how do we get through it that's a question that I have been asking I've been asking how do we navigate this new norm how are we going to get through that there's been a question that's been recurring in conversations that I've had I've asked it and have been asked it I have said it and I have have heard it said to me and that statement is this, that I've never seen anything like this before. Or I've been asked, have you ever seen anything like this before? Now the question is, no, I have not seen anything like this. And I don't think many of you have. Uh, in our generation, my generation, we certainly have not. Many of us feel that our nation and our world is standing on the brink of, of something uh, certainly uh, bigger than anything we've ever faced before. But I believe it truly can be our finest hour. I believe that you and I, as brothers and sisters in Christ, as Christians, if we will navigate through these times in the way that God uh, informs us in His Word that we can, I believe this can be our finest hour. If you have a copy of God's Word, I would encourage you to take it and to find in it the book of Deuteronomy, the, the fifth book in the Bible. And in particular, would you find chapter 31? Chapter 31 in the book of Deuteronomy. The context of, of, of chapter 31 in the book of Deuteronomy is that the children of Israel are completely exhausted from wandering around in the wilderness for 40 years. They have been going through unknown, uncharted lands. Their future has been unknown. Their future, when we find them in chapter 31, is still unknown. Uh, they're living in a day that they don't understand. And I'm going to be very honest with you. When I, first, uh, when I first found this, this passage of Scripture, I found verse 2. And, and in particular, I found verse 2 looking for something totally different. I was looking for a verse to, to actually give us comfort about being shut up in our homes, for being sheltered in place. And, and if you have your copy, look at verse 2. Before we read the passage, look at, look at verse 2 and, and look at what it says there. This is verse 2. I'm reading out of the New American Standard. Look at verse 2. And he, and that's Moses, he said to them, I'm 120 years old, and and look at what it says, I'm no longer able to go out and come in. And the Lord said to me, you shall not go over to this Jordan. I'll be very honest with you, when I found that verse, I I was looking for a verse about being shut up in our homes. And, And that's what took me to that verse, because so many of us are sheltering in place. So many of our counties have that as a, a, a mandate for us. And, and I, I went to that verse, and, and, and I went there looking for something to, to give us peace about not being able to do that. And God, from me looking for a verse about being sheltered at, at home to this passage, and he said, Donnie, look at the whole passage. Take the whole passage. And, and, and from that whole passage, I, he, he gave us, I think, for us today, and if you'll just give me an opportunity for the, the next few minutes that we have together, I think some, some great wisdom about how we can navigate through this uncertain time, how we can get through these uncharted waters. Because what, what he did for these, uh, the, the children of Israel in an uncertain future, he does for us. So, so now let's look at the whole passage. 
uh, Deuteronomy chapter 31, beginning with verse 1. Let's read verses 1 through 8. Look at your copy of God's Word. I'm going to stand, and, and if you want to stand while you're reading God's Word, that would be wonderful. Don't feel like you have to. I'm going to stand because, because that's what we always do together. Verse 1 from chapter 31. So Moses went out, and he spoke these words to all Israel. Verse 2, we've already read. I'll read it again. And he said to them, I'm 120 years old today. I'm no longer able to come out and, and go in. And the Lord has said to me, you shall not cross this Jordan. It is the Lord your God who will cross ahead of you. He will destroy these nations before you. And you shall dispossess them. Joshua is the one who will cross ahead of you, just as the Lord has spoken. The Lord will do to them just as he did to Sion and to Og, the kings of the Amorites, and to their land when he destroyed them. Verse 5. The Lord will de deliver them before you, and you shall do to them according to all the commandments which I have commanded you. Verse 6, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or tremble at them, for the Lord your God is the one who goes with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Verse 7, then Moses called Joshua, and he said to him in the sight of all of Israel, be strong and courageous, for you shall go with the people into the land which the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them. And you shall give it to them as an inheritance. And then he concludes there in verse 8. Look at what he says. The Lord is the one who goes ahead of you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Pray with me, would you? Father, would you bless as we have read and now as we study this passage of Scripture. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. As I prayed and I studied through this passage of Scripture, and I prayed and I asked God for what He would have for us as we, uh, if, if He afforded us the opportunity to be able to, to meet together in, in this Facebook service, I see in it truth to help us navigate this time of uncertainty. It's what He said through Moses and through Joshua for the children of Israel in a time of uncertainty and, and what I, I believe he says for us today. So if you'll allow me, I just want to point out some truths that, that I believe will help us navigate this time of uncertainty. Truth number one that I see from this passage is, is this, that everyone faces an uncertain future. Everyone faces an uncertain future. As I read and reread and reread this passage, I found that it's true for all people that we all face an uncertain future, except for maybe Moses here. Moses' short-term future is very known. Moses is told that he's not going to be able to go into the promised land. God has told him, Moses, you're not going in. You're not crossing over. You're done for now. Uh, your future is this. You're not going in. But everyone else in this passage, uh, their future is uncertain. They don't know what lies ahead of them. For instance, number one, that's true for the children of Israel. They had not lived on the other side of the river yet. They had not crossed over into the promised land. It was uncharted. It was unknown. It was uncertain. They had not lived their future yet. Uh, they didn't know what lied beyond the, the, the river. It was uncertain for them. So for them, they're facing that. It was uncertain. Number two, it was True for all believers that have lived before you and me. In this generation, uh, we have believers that have gone on to be with the Lord before us today. Their future was uncertain. No believer that lived before you and me today uh, had uh, tomorrow's edition of the newspaper delivered to them ahead of time. None of them knew what the future was going to be before they lived it. Every believer that ever lived before you and me lived it the same way that you and I live it, one day at a time. Number three, this was true before this pandemic. I mean, think about it with me for a second. We lived in the same situation that we're in right now before the coronavirus. We didn't know what tomorrow held a month ago. Uh, when, when we entered into 2020, never having even heard of COVID-19. We did not know what to 
tomorrow hell. This was true for the children of Israel. It was true for believers before us. It was true before this pandemic. Uh, number four, it, was, it, it will be true until the return of Christ. Friends, the only thing that's, that's certain throughout all of time for us is that there has been a promise since Christ ascended into heaven is that he was coming back. That's the promise that we've been given about the future. We've just allowed this pandemic to make the uncertainty of the future acquire a name. And with that name, it has gained the ability to give us stress and potentially debilitating fear of an uncertain future. Friends, hear me. The future has always been uncertain. It has never been certain. We've never known what tomorrow has held. The Bible speaks of that often. Look at what it says in Proverbs 27. Proverbs 27, 1, the writer says, Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. Jesus himself spoke about it. Look at what Jesus says in Matthew 6, 34. He says, So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. Look at how he says it. Each day has enough trouble of its own. We have never had the certainty of our future. Our future has always been uncertain, but we have allowed a pandemic and the bad news of a pandemic to give a name to an unknown and uncertain future. Friend, we've always had an uncertain future. We've never known what tomorrow hid, held. We've just always taken tomorrow for granted. I would say from this passage, our first truth would be that everyone, them and us, faces an uncertain future. Truth number two that I see from this passage and for us today is this. Truth number two is that every believer can trust in the presence of the Lord. Every believer can trust in the presence of the Lord. Now that's good news. And if you were here I would say to you, hey, turn to your favorite neighbor and say, listen up, that's good news. Uh, and in fact, I, I'm going to do that now. I would say to you, if you're there with your family and you're with somebody, turn to them and say, hey, that sounds like good news, because that is good news. In fact, if you have your copy of God's Word, and I hope you have your Bible still open, uh, look, look at verse 3. Verse 3 says, it is the Lord your God who will cross ahead of you. That is good news. God is saying to the children of Israel, they're not going in there behind uh, a, a, another person. They're going in there behind God. God is going ahead of them. Look at verse 6. Oh, that's the good news. Verse 6 says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not tremble at them. For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you. They're not going alone. That is good news. They, uh, they're able to trust in the presence of the Lord. Look at verse 7. Again, God says, be strong and courageous courageous. He's encouraging them. This is good news. They can trust in the presence of the Lord. And again in verse 8, it is the Lord who goes ahead of you. He will be with you. He will not fail or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. What is he saying to them? Well, he's saying with them, hey, I'll be with you. Kim and I the other night, we were watching TV. We're, we're shelter in place just like many of you are. And and, and we were watching TV, and, and we, we watch American Idol. You may not watch that show. We watch American Idol. And uh, a, a contestant came on, and he sang a song that was written by Barry Grody, Hal Davis, Bob West, and Willie Hutch. That may not mean anything to you. It certainly didn't mean anything to me. But Kim, my wife, uh, knew every single word of that song. She sang it uh, and had that complete song memorized. It was released in 1970, the same year that the Apollo 13 mission was. It was released that same year, sung by the Jackson 5, in particular by Michael Jackson of the Jackson 5. And the song was titled, I'll Be There. Now listen to a little bit of the lyrics of that song. Part of the lyrics say, and oh, I'll be there to comfort you. Build my world of dreams around you. I'm so glad that I found you. I'll be there with a love that's strong. I'll be your strength. I'll keep holding on. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. I'll be there. Kim knew all the words to that song. She, she sang it like she could have been on American Idol. Long before that song was ever written by those 
for me and long before it was recorded and released by Motown Records in 1970, long before any of those words were written, God said to the children of Israel, I'll be there. And it's just as applicable to you and to me. He said to the children of Israel and he's saying to us, I'll be there. We can trust in the presence of the Lord. Far surpassing any human ability to be with each other. Oh, we're separated now because of social distancing and because of sheltering at home. We can't be there with each other now. We can trust in the presence of the Lord. For just a moment, can I make some, maybe some truths about the presence of God and the presence of others in our life? Can I make some comparisons? Hey, I want to say first of all that, number one, Moses had been their guide up to this point for the children of Israel. Moses had been their guide up until this point. Uh, Moses had been the one that marched into Pharaoh's court and demanded that, that God's people be set free. Moses did that. Moses is the one that raised his staff over the Red Sea and the waters parted. Moses did that. Moses is the one that climbed up Mount Sinai and received the Ten Commandments. Moses had been the one that had led them for 40 years in the wilderness. Moses had been their guide. Moses' presence had been felt for the people up to this point. But all of that's about to change. Moses had been their guide up to this point. Now, truth number two, we've all had guides in our lives. We've all had guides. You've had guides and I've had guides. And, 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 and this is a great time to thank God for the godly guides like Moses that we have had in our lives. Maybe your parents or your grandparents were your guides. Maybe a Sunday school teacher or an Awana's teacher or RAs, GAs, maybe a pastor, a youth pastor, someone in your, in your, your life, a children's minister, someone that came along beside you and, and gave you guidance along the way. Maybe it was a friend, maybe it was a neighbor, maybe it was a co-worker, someone on staff at a church where you were, somebody Somebody gave you guidance along the way. Listen, I, I'm going I'm to challenge you to do something. I'm going to challenge you to, to possibly do. This, this is what I've been doing. This is what I, I, I want to, to just throw out there for you. I've been, I've been trying to do this, and, and just, just think about this. If I think about somebody, I'm either picking up a phone and calling them or I'm shooting them a text. I can't go see them. I'm limited by what I can do, but I'm... I'm doing, I was watching the news last night, and a friend of mine from Bullard was on the news. Hadn't seen or talked to him in, in over a year. He was on the news giving an interview. I just picked up my phone. I looked. I still had his contact. I sent him a text. Within three minutes, he texted me back. It was like we had never been separated. I thought of him. I sent him a text. I'm kind of looking at it this way. Think of one, send one. Think of one, send one. I'm either sending him a call or sending him a text. Think of one, send one. I'm also thinking about this, that if I get one, if I get a text or I get a call, I'm making one. If I get a text, I'm sending a text. If somebody texts to check on me, I'm checking on somebody else. If somebody calls to check on me, I'm immediately thinking of somebody else that I can call. I think in this time of social distancing, one way that we can make this our finest hours is if we remember those godly people that we have in our life and we check on each other. And we, we, we pick up a phone and we call them or we send them a text. Or however it is that you stay in contact. Let's don't let social distancing keep us from checking on each other. Hey, we all had those godly guides in our lives. So if you think of one, call one or text one or, or check on one. And if you get one, if you get a call, call somebody. If you get a text, send a text. Moses had been their guide up to this point. We've all had guides in our life. Number three. God is a present guide in my life right now. God is a present guide in your life right now. I love that phrase, it is the Lord who goes before you. There always comes a time when our earthly guides can only do so much. God is a present guide in your life right now. The promise that says he was with them is the promise that says he's with you. The promise that says he'll never leave you nor forsake you to them is the promise that he makes to you. In our text, when he says that he's their guide, it's the promise that he says that he's your God. In our day and time, he is with you as he was in their day and time. When it says in verse 6 and verse 8, he'll never leave you nor forsake you, that's to you. 
In just a short time, Joshua is going to take over in our text. Moses can't do it anymore. And so Joshua is taking over. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 5, look at what it says. It's on the screen behind me. You'll be able to see it. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I'll be with you. I'll never leave you and forsake you. Listen, friend. You can trust God's guidance in your life. You can trust his presence in the uncertainties of this life. Most of your translations say something like, don't be afraid or terrified because of them. If you've got a new, tra- new living translation, it says, don't be afraid or panic. That's one way of looking at it. There's a lot of panic going on right now. We don't need to panic, friend. The ESV says, don't fear or be in dread of them. Oh, there's a lot of that going on right now. We don't have to dread the future. The New American Standard says, don't be afraid or tremble at them. That, that, look, look at these words, terrified, panic, dread, tremble. What God was saying to them, he's saying to you and me, we do not have to fear the uncertainty of our times. God is still God. The, the promise that he gave to them is the promise that he's given to us. I want to speak courage into you. What God has laid upon my heart is that in these uncertain times, you and I can have courage. We don't have to fear the uncertainties. God is going to get us through this. God can be trusted. We can trust in his presence in these uncertain times. We don't have to be terrified. We don't have to panic. We don't have to tremble. We don't have to be filled with dread. God will get us through these times. So how do we navigate these times of uncertainties? That's the title of what God has laid upon my heart today is how to navigate these uncertain times. That would be our takeaways. That would be what do we do? How do we get through these times? I would say to you, it's four things that I, that I would say would be, what do we do with our time? We've got a lot of time. We, 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 we've got uh, shelter in place. We've got uh, working at home. We've got, uh, we can't go and check and see each other. So, so what, what do we do with our time? Well, can I give us four? Number one. We remember his presence on this journey. We're not alone. We can remember his presence with us. We may feel alone, but we're not alone. We may be separated by distance, but God is there with you. Look at Isaiah 26, 3. The Bible says you'll keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Don't, don't allow the devil to fill you with a lie that says you're alone. You're not. God is with you. I know that, that you may be physically alone, but every time I pray for you, and I pray for so many every day, I've gone through our church, church rules several times. I, I use my, my phone. It's got our, our church directory on it. Every single day I'm going through and I'm praying for every single person on our church row. And I know that some of you live alone, and every time I go through and and one of you that live alone, I am praying every single day for you that although you live alone, I pray that you don't feel alone because I'm praying that the presence of God will be so real in your life that you know that he's right there with you. And I'm praying for that now for you. And I know that even if you've got family around you, being that you're, you're sheltered in place and you can't get out and do the things that you want to, I just want us to remember that we've got his presence with us. Remember that on this journey, and it is a journey, it had a starting point, and there is a destination. We're going to get through this. We're, we're going to make it to the other side. We're going to cross this river. We are. Let's just remember his presence, and we're going to keep our minds stayed on, the, on God, and we're going to get through this. We can trust him. Number two, we seek his guidance on this journey. We seek his guidance. We turn to his word. We turn to, to, to good godly counseling, good godly preaching. Listen, there's never been more good Bible preaching available than there is right now. You have more opportunities to do what we're doing right now. Listen, I was so blessed this past week to sit under good Bible teaching on this venue right now. I had the privilege this past week to sit under teaching by two godly men. One was my son. My son, Trey, is, uh, is a pastor in Athens at a cowboy church in Athens. And I, uh, I had the blessing of sitting under his teaching on Facebook. 
and uh, and got to hear a very special part of his message about God's timing and about how God uh, is never, uh, he, you know, he's never early, never late. He's just always on time, and how 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 this even uh, is is all a part of God's timing. And boy, it was just a message that my son spoke so. Uh, so exact, and it spoke to my heart. Good godly teaching through this, this venue, through social media. And then I got to sit through a message, message of a good friend, uh, Jason Hoffman, who is a pastor in Elkhart. And he, uh, he's putting daily devotions on like so many pastors are. And, and Jason had, had a message about how God is in control when, he doesn't, when it doesn't even look like he's in control. And, and, and how that message just spoke to my heart. Here's two godly men that I've, I've known for a long time and how, how that, that venue, that, that opportunity is for us. We've never had it like we have it right now. This can be our finest hour. If we'll take advantage of it and we'll, we'll seek godly counsel and seek his guidance, oh, I, I would say to you that, that when, when the children of Israel realized that that Moses wasn't going to be with them, and that Joshua was, that, that, that God wasn't leaving them, that God was going to be there for them. If, if we'll take that to heart, that, that God's still with us, and he's, he still has put those godly leaders in our life, and that we still have that opportunity, uh, we can follow God's guidance. In the same way we're following the CDC's guidance and, and our, our national guidance and, and our, our local leaders' guidance, let's follow God's guidance. And look at what the Bible says in Psalm 29, 11. The Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will best bless his people with peace. That's what we need. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of panic, a lot of fear floating around. Christians, we, we can have peace. Seek God's guidance. Number three, we can trust his provisions on this journey. His provisions. He, he'll provide for us. The same God that was God before this virus started is the God that is still God during this virus that will be God when this virus and the cure for this virus has been found. We can have provisions on this. Uncertain times and uncharted waters do not nullify the promises of God. We still sing what we always have sung. Standing on the promises of God, I cannot fall. Listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting in my Savior as my all in all. Standing on the promises of God. 2 Corinthians 1.20 says, For all the promises of God find their yes in Him. That is why through Him that we utter our amen to God in His glory. Oh, it is though God has put His seal of approval on all of His promises. That amen is His confirmed and agreed to what He has said. Friend, we can trust His provisions through this time. Number four. We can praise his power on this journey. We can praise his power. We can find things to thank God for during this difficult time. We can. Now, you may have to turn the television off to do that. I, Kim and I looked at each other at one point this past week and said, I'm tired of watching that. And we did. We turned it off. And I'm, I'm, I, I watch the news. I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging you to stay informed. But we can find promises to claim. We can find blessings to thank God for. We can, we can find things to praise God for. I quoted it last week. May I quote it again? Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I close with this verse, Isaiah 43, 2. Isaiah reminds us that God has said, when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And though the rivers come, they will not overwhelm you. And when you walk through the fire, you won't be burned in the flame. It will not consume you. How do, we, how do we navigate these uncertain times? We do it the same way that the children of Israel did it. Friend, we do it the same way we did 
before this pandemic. We do it the same way that we will until the return of Jesus Christ. We do it with God. My prayer is that you and I will keep our eyes on the one and only Savior of the world, and that's Jesus Christ. And we remember what he did for us when he came and died on Calvary. When he came taking all of our sins, bearing them on Calvary, being placed in a tomb, rising again on that third day, and providing for us eternal life. Greater is he that is alive in you and me than he that's in this world. Oh, let me close by saying a word of prayer. Father, I do pray that as we, uh, as we have read in your word today and as we have studied in this passage of Scripture, that we will navigate differently this week, these uncertain times. That we will not let all the bad news that we hear cloud out the good news of your word. I pray that each one of us will remember that you are alive, that you are all-powerful, that truly you are in control, that you are the one that will provide all that we need, that we're not alone, that you are with us, that you are taking every step of these uncertain times with us. Thank you, Father, that through you we can do all things through Christ that gives us strength. So bless those that have been with us today. Glory, honor, and praise belongs to you and to you alone. Thank you for it all. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And may the Lord give you peace. God bless you. Hey, I'll be back on here at 5 o'clock tonight for a time of Bible study. Look forward to seeing you if you need anything. Give us a call. God bless you. Have a great day in the Lord.